Step one, wake up early, gon' rise with the sun. Step two, get some good, some food in you. Step three, think grow hard about what you wanna be. Step four, fuck everybody, just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. I'm Toroti and of course today is Foodies Friday and you know what time that is, today is Friday so today I'm bringing to you another foil pan cake recipe so if you've been looking for a way to make different flavors just from the same batter and for your foil pancakes to your customer, to your client, you just want to enjoy this at home I've got you guys, so just come right along and we're going to go through this so we're going to make it for different flavors of cake the first one is going to be chocolate cake, red velvet cake, um, cookies and cream, then the plain vanilla. Like, share and subscribe. The first thing I do guys is that to measure this bowl that I'll be using so that when I'm measuring out into four different portions, it will be very very easy for me to um, portion it out and know what is what. So it is measured at 580 grams. So I'll know that I'm going to be subtracting 580 grams. The very first thing I'll be adding to my butter is butter. With 250 grams of butter measured in here, I'll be adding 200 grams of sugar. I will whip this all up right now. And I'm going to just put aside every every of the butter by the sides to just make everything have a fine consistency. So you guys, you mix your cake until it's very airy, and once it's airy and soft and buttery then you know that it has mixed very well you don't under mix and you don't over mix once you over mix and you under mix things will go wrong while you are baking so make sure that it's just on this consistency um it is the only days that they will say okay when your butter is white that is when it's done or when your sugar melts no once you discover that it's very airy then you can move along and go to the next procedure which is adding your eggs so we had your eggs one after the other so these are our eggs we we'll had our heads one after the other. Why we mix them? In why we mix them? we measured the gram of this bowl so we are going to measure it again to know the exact grams of what the butter is and that way we'll be able to divide this into four equal parts so as to get on with the other part of this process so, so this is 1522 gram and we know that the first time it was 580 for the bowl alone so we're going to do 1522 minus 580 the butter is 942 grams so we're going to divide 942 by 4 to know how many um, gram per bowl that we're going to have which is going to be 235 grams per bowl with just a little bit extra on it so let's move ahead to dividing this into four different parts. So the batter has been divided into four equal parts using my um, scale, measuring scale. So we are going to move ahead into making this into four different flavors. And I'm sure you guys are ready to come right along with me. So let's go. Start 
So I'll be starting with the first one, which is going to be the cookies and cream batter. So I'm going to be adding a little bit of milk. You can add milk or yogurt. So anyone that you have, you just measure it and add it into this. So because this batter is divided into four parts, I'm going to use the exact measurement for this portion one quarter of this portion for just this batter but if you want me to do a full video a full recipe for this just let me know down in the comment section and i'm going to do so i'm going to be adding yogurt not butter so i'm just going to be adding yogurt not um milk you can add milk if you have milk so don't disturb yourself i'm going to be using maryland cookies any cookie that you have will work just fine once you know that it is crunchy so it works just fine so i'm just going to crumble cookies inside this so that it will give you that kind of finish look you can see chunks of cookies crumbled into this so we're not going to put that much because you see it's okay so we'll just use one more as well for just topping i'm going to add flavor into this i'm going to be using vanilla butternut flavor to bring out the creaminess in this just a little will do to go a long way. And we're also going to be adding just one tablespoon of yogurt. You can also add milk if you prefer that. So this is just one tablespoon. Also going down into this. to do every leaf uh, mixing and this is uh, my foil pan for the first one so i'm just going to be transferring this batter into this <music> and cream cake yeah ready so i'm just going to um squeeze in this just to top it off with the cookies this is a chocolate chip cookie by the way because i love chocolate so i want to stop top with something that will make it nice so i just need to make sure that we press this in a little bit into the batter so that it will bake with it So that is ready to be baked. Okay, so moving on to the next one right now. Um, this is a plain cake. You can just leave it as this as vanilla cake and just add vanilla extract. Or you can just spice things up for your clients. So I'm going to turn this to a lemon cake. Just add a little lemon juice and lemon juice. And that is all the flavor you need to add to this one. And voila, that is all. So we'll just grate in a little bit of lemon into this. So the house from the lemon zest is going to release beautiful and sweet flavors into the cake and it's going to be beautiful. It's tasting amazing. It smells nice already. Not exaggerating, no capping. You don't need that much actually because um, you're not doing the whole cake. This is just a little portion, one fourth of the portion, a whole portion of cake. So just a little will do. And I think this that we have here is enough you're going to add just a little bit of lemon juice to get this party going so we're going to just add a little bit so that we don't want it too acidic just want to give it a little bit of kick so we're mixing this together. So that's all we need to do mixed, and we just transfer it into the foil pan. I, for one, I'm not a fan of topping your lemon or orange cake with the zest because 
I strongly believe that the zest in lemon or orange cake would burn while it is in the oven. So I would rather not take that risk of eating burnt zest and just have it in it. to the next one so right now we're going to move in I head into the red velvet now this is the third cake we're doing so the red velvet I'm going to be using a little bit of red food coloring and I'm going to be using milk zest flavor this flavor is bank since I discovered it it has been my go-to flavor for red velvet so I'm just going to add very small tiny bit of red color ring a little bit of milk zest because it's very powerful and strong as well and the secret ingredient of every red velvet not just about the coloring and the flavor you have to eat is to add a little bit kick of cocoa powder that will give you the trick of the red velvet you're waiting for anticipating So we'll add just half tablespoon, half teaspoon of cocoa powder, and that is all. So give it a little kick and kick, bring out the velvety texture and flavor that you want. So I'm going to be adding just a little bit more of food coloring to give me the perfect color that I think I want for my red velvet. <laughs> This color consistency is very very good and we're just going to transfer our butter from here into here. So right now this is ready and it is ready to go on fire. So moving ahead to do the chocolate cake, I'm using chocolate flavor and I would say that the secret to any chocolate cake being very chocolatey is that you had cocoa powder, you cook it with um, a little bit of coffee or you had melted chocolate that you also melt, while melting you add milk so that it will not become thick and make your cake hard. So if you want it very chocolatey, I'm just going to be using cocoa powder and chocolate flavor, cocoa powder and chocolate flavor. So we'll move right ahead. With that. So I'll be using one and a half tablespoon of cocoa powder for this measurement. And if you are confused with any measurements, you can check in the description box. You see the correct and complete measurement, right? Yeah. So I'll be using a little bit of um chocolate flavor to give it just a little bit of kick into the chocolate world and we move from there you guys mixed and ready to go into the pan so see how chocolate it is it looks yummy already you can give this a kick of um, adding chocolate chips and it's going to be very very nice so let's pour it into the bowl <laughs> so i'm going to transfer it <laughs> I'm going to transfer the butter into the foil pan now and voila, chocolate cake is chocolating. No, it's not going to stick. That's the beauty of oil pan. 
Oh, no, this my fault. Give me a smile, Daddy. Don't brought her So, guys, <laughs> you might be wondering that I never raised my foil pans with either butter or flour for it not to stick. Once it bakes thoroughly properly, it's going to come out palm like this. You don't actually need to do anything with your foil pans. And that's the beauty of using a foil pan. Your cake is just going to come out the way it's going to. So, it's time to bake. So the oven has been preheated and it's on 250 degrees and it has been preheated for 15 minutes. So right now I'm going to be moving the batter into the oven. So comes up from the foil pan once you just do like this shake it shake it then give the butt of the pan a little bit of press forward then you turn it over and it comes out see clean comes out clean so let's see our cakes are ready multiplied a little bit in size even after baking and we can see this is our this is our chocolate cakes and and these are chocolate cake and it smells amazing i won't even lie to you so whenever you want to make chocolate cake make sure you're adding cocoa powder don't add brownie don't add that one just add cocoa powder or you add a, a little bit of coffee or melted chocolate that you've mixed with milk it smells amazing these are real velvet and you can see how soft it is that's why you have to do your mixing very well this is our cookie and cream i can see the crunches of cookies inside it and it is looking amazing. It's also soft and very, very crunchy as well. It's still remaining crunchy inside the way I'm looking at it. I can feel it from the outside, but definitely when I eat it, I'm going to give you a better view of it. And this is our lemon cake. Welcome back, guys. And we are done to, we are down to the end of the video. We are done baking from the chocolate cake to the red velvet cake to the cream cream and cookie and to the lemon cake. I want to have a light taste test of this cake and to just give you my honest opinion on what it is because sometimes. You bake and it's a hit, and sometimes you bake and it's not. But I trust that this recipe is a hit. So let me not boast too much. I'm going to tell you exactly how I feel about it once I taste it. So I'm sure I look homeless right now after baking. Forbid that. It's not easy recording and baking at the same time. So this is the chocolate cake, and I'm going to be tasting this. This is giving, it's over giving. You know, when you have a mouthful of chocolate, that's exactly what it is. If you want to make your chocolate cake, the trick is always add cocoa powder. If you can't get cocoa powder, add a little bit of coffee to kick up that chocolate flavor that you are trying to look for there. Or have your melted chocolate, is the best. I'm going to rinse out my mouth so that I can get the original taste of the red velvet. So, now trying the red velvet. Try it to try. This is red velvet to the wine. This is with the red wine. Where it is giving, this is red velvet you should be asking for a lot king for. Unless it's giving out, I'm going to just come out again. So this is the cream and cookie cake. Let's see how it is. Whether the cookies are still crunchy in there. You know the richness of adding milk to your cake or your butter. Hmm. And it's amazing that all this is just from the same from the same batter, just a little bit different here and there. And 
You're going to make this with less than 2,000 naira. By the time you sell this for 1,000 naira, that is 4k already. Time to your profit. And this milk and cookie is giving way more than I'm expecting it to give. So let's try the lemon cake. So join me trying the lemon cake as well. The smell alone of the lemon cake is intense. I'm not say that. I would say that the cake that yeah that has the strongest smell would be the chocolate cake and this lemon cake is smelling. <laughs> I'm pushing it to you guys like you can smell it. <laughs> so silly of me. So the lemon cake is giving and it is smelling really nice. I hope my food, delicious. In fact, and you feel the zest there, you feel a little bit of tang from the juice. It's not bitter, it's not sour, but you feel a little bit of that tang from the juice. Mm. Really nice. I love it. I'm going to go back for more. Let me end the video right here. So thank you guys for tuning in. Thanks for watching. If you have questions, drop it in the comment section. If you want to uh, me to make individual recipes for this so you know how to do it if you are making a larger portion of cake, let me know. I got you. I'm going to do it for you. Just drop a comment in the comment section. I will know. Like this video and share your friends and family. Thank you guys for tuning in and watching this episode. Bye. Nice. Yeah. Yep. I'm looking on this right now. <laughs> so sure about that.